Hey guys, welcome to the Captain's Log. This is a funny one because it's actually starting when the last one ended. Because I'm currently editing together the last Captain's Log, which is going to be out in two days. It is Wednesday today. This will be out on Friday. So it's kind of weird. I just watched this whole Captain's Log. It's a long one. It's an hour and 17 minutes, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. A lot of great stuff in it. A lot of cool stuff to see. Just family stuff and things going on here. And some behind the scenes of Trek Yards as well. And just a lot of great stuff as always. I don't know what this one holds in store, but we'll see. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. And uh, look forward to uh, showing off more cool stuff and just hanging out with you guys because it's just so much fun. So Anyway, like I said, this is a weird one, because I just finished filming the end of this one, and then edited it all together, and now I'm starting the new one here, at the end of the last one. It's like, it's like you never went anywhere. It's a continuation from last time. <laughs> so, let's see what this holds, okay? This should be some exciting stuff. So, let's, let's get on our way. Let's do our thing. Let's captains log this up. Hey guys, so I got something exciting in the mail today that I really wanted to share with you guys. This is something I picked up from uh, someone online. This is a beautiful, beautiful art print of the TOS Enterprise. At the bottom it says, all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And this came in different configurations, um, not configurations, it came in different versions if you will there was a you could get it on canvas you could get it on in different sizes as well i got one of the cheaper versions but i wanted to show off this guy's work this guy does fantastic work if you want to get a print like that go to hero herofiedart.com herofiedart.com uh rob taylor does some fantastic fantastic artwork you can look him up on etsy as well um tell him captain foley from trek yard sent you um, because I am so blown away with this print. It's beautiful. It's glossy as you can see. I need to get this framed and put up in the new office when I get the new office up. This will be beside my 350 uh, Enterprise model, I'm sure. This with a few other things. Um, this is going to make it look very classy and nice. I love this print to pieces and it came really quick from the States as well. So if you guys are interested, check it out, herofiedart.com. I will put a link in the description below, but there you guys go, herofiedart.com. And I got the Trek Yards tree almost finished. So let's take a look at that. All right, we'll just do a nice wide shot of everything and then kind of give you a detailed shot. I didn't put as much on as last year and I'm still not quite finished yet. Um, I've kind of just got the main stuff on here. I'm not sure I'm going to actually put as much stuff on as last year. Uh, but, uh, so there's the quick, quick once over. I'll show you a few of the specific things in a second here. So Trek Yards and Fleet Yards members, the Fleet Yards slash Trek Yards tree is up this year again. Let's take a quick look at everything that's on it, shall we? If we start over here, we see a Sovereign class in the distance, far in the distance as it approaches Deep Space Nine. Dun dun dun, dun 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 dun, dun dun dun. Yeah, anyway. Um, got Voyager docked there to one of the upper pylons. And then coming in for a sweet docking is the Little Defiant. Now moving over here, we have the one of the Hallmark TOS Enterprises. This one actually the nacelles light up. The bridge 
dome and the uh, lower planetary sensor light up also and it plays this original music but only when it's on the stand unfortunately going over here we've got bb8 arch d2 and a light up millennium falcon you can see the engines there also put my atst in front of the tree this year this is the one i built this year just wanted to show it off back there we got an x-wing that does have light up engines you can see there. Move up this way. This is this year's Hallmark ornament. It is the Franklin, and it lights up as well. Of course, coming over here. This is last year's 50th anniversary edition Hallmark ornament. Uh, this is the Golden Cage Era Enterprise. As you can see, it's got the spikes and the larger bridge dome and a very good sound clip uh, chip in there so we will move on now down here we got Klingon D7 which of course also lights up and shoots photon torpedoes And has made up engines at the back. So it's just above the TOS Enterprise coming in for the kill. But the original Cage Enterprise is back there to stop it. Moving over here, we've got one from a few years ago. This is Hallmark uh, Enterprise C, Ambassador class. Beautiful ship, beautiful ornament. And here, the Sovereign class has got closer to Deep Space Nine now. Here you can see it all lit up. Or it could be that it's just a close one and there's another Sovereign down there far off in the distance. Moving up here, we've got the 25th anniversary, well, 25th anniversary for TNG, Enterprise D. This one also lights up and has sound, but only when on the stand. Got a little C-3PO, little R2-D2, Trek Yards badge. Here we got another Enterprise D, lights up with flashy lights. And yet another R2-D2. This one actually used to make sound, doesn't anymore. I've replaced the batteries, done a bunch of other stuff, but to no avail. Up here we've got C-3PO and me Grimlock, not tree ornament. Me Grimlock, king. Yep, I went there. Got a Romulan to Deradex that lights up. Little Enterprise stuck in there and Trek Yards web series thing there. Over here, go over a little further, we got Klingon Bird of Prey. And some small little tribbles hanging off the branch there. Go up here, and I will just turn this guy on so you can see him lit up. There is another BB-8. There we go. Lit up. And the little light behind him glows as well. Got a Megatron up there. Defiant. Galileo 7. Shuttlecraft to Enterprise. Shuttlecraft to Enterprise. Spock here. Happy Holidays. Live long. And sound wave there, and at the very top we just got a little star. And if you sc scroll back, if you move back, some of my model kits up there as well. So there you guys have it. That is the Trek Yard slash Fleet Yards tree for this year. Might add a few more things. It doesn't have quite as much on it as last year. Just there's not a lot, not a lot of room to display these large ships on such a small tree. But hopefully you guys get the idea and you like what you see so thank you guys so much for watching talk to you soon let's see what's out there well before we do that let's go down here r2d2 is ready for december 25th and i started out having one triple under the tree they've since multiplied so it's probably not a good thing as I said, there's some that's even moved up here. There's two little ones hanging there. But anyway, guys, talk to you soon. 
So guys, just looking at the tree and looking at a few other people's posts online of their stuff and I realized I forgot to include some stuff. As I said, there's not as much on the tree last year as there was. Um, it's a little bit cluttered as it is, but I thought I was remiss. I should have brought out some of the other ornaments. So here's the Hallmark transporter. Not gonna hang it up. I've also brought out Ben Cisco and Trip here. And these, these are just keychains, but they look good on a tree, so. A little tricorder. A uh, little communicator here. And again, these are just keychains, so. But they work as ornaments for me. This one's not working. Must need new batteries. That's kind of disappointing. But whatever, I'll hang it on the tree anyway. And of course the phaser's stuck in there too, which is also just a keychain. I didn't want it dangling because it looks kind of stupid when it hangs upside down. So kind of tucked it up there like that kind of cluttered a little bit plus there's my uh, refit enterprise and my uh, Miranda class or the reliant in the other room which I'll just show you right now there's just no room for them on the tree this year unfortunately so of course we have these ones too here's the enterprise that lights up the refit Really beautiful ones. And up here is the Miranda, which looks like it also needs batteries. What the hell? I had to replace the batteries at the same time on these. But there's the Miranda, the Reliant, and the uh, Refit. There's a bunch of other stuff here that could be used as ornaments. There are probably still a few ornaments here, like the NX-01 pewter one there. That's a hallmark. It's heavy as hell to put on a tree though. It was on the tree last year, but not this year. So, and that's where all the other hallmark ornaments go. There's the stand for the 25th anniversary uh, Enterprise, or TNG Enterprise. Over here, this is the stand for the uh, regular uh, TOS Enterprise that lights up with sound and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, there are those. There's probably a few other little ornaments hidden in amongst here. But like I said, they're always on display all year long, so I kind of forget their ornaments. So, but anyway thought I'd show those to you guys. I gotta change the batteries in the Miranda, I guess. But the refit still works. And I hate where they put the hanger because of the way it hangs, but what are you gonna do, right? Last year I had them on the tree, but this year I decided just not to. They're just too cluttered. So. There you have it, guys. So guys, I'm off to Blappy's house. Gonna hang out with him and Michael for a bit. I'm not bringing any work to work on today, no model or nothing. Um, Samuel and myself just recorded two mission briefings, one for a special Star Wars month that we're doing uh, leading up to uh, The Last Jedi. So that's fun. Today's been kind of a odd day for me. Uh, my uncle passed away. Uh, last Thursday, uh, today is Tuesday, um, so the visitation and stuff was on Sunday, and the funeral was yesterday. Uh, 
He's also my godfather. Uh, we weren't very close these last couple years, but you know, at the funeral, talking to my cousins and things, we I used to see them all the time when we were younger. Uh, so it hasn't really hit me. Today's kind of been feeling kind of down uh, in the dumps because of that. You know, it is what it is. I feel bad for not seeing him more these last couple years, but uh, anyway. And also this morning we had to take uh, Precious into the vet. Um, she is now just over six months and we uh, wanted to get her uh, spayed. So she's in there getting that done. So I'm worried about her. You know, they make vets always give you, make you sign these papers, you know. It's very rare, but she could die. Thanks, assholes. Here, sign this so we're not at fault. All right. All right, and then just as I was getting ready to leave, uh, it's good today. It was like a few minutes ago. The phone rings and it's the vet. And I'm like, oh good god, no! Because that was bad. Um, Precious had uh, her one baby canine tooth hadn't fallen out yet, but the adult one had already grown in in front of it. So she had like a snaggle tooth. She had like two sh teeth, and the baby one's super sharp. The adult one's more rounded, right? So they were gonna re remove that for 14 extra dollars, whatever. But they called and because of the closeness of the baby tooth to the uh, molar behind it, to the nerves, they have to take the molar out too. So she's gonna be, but there's no extra charge for that. But she's gonna be short two extra teeth when we get her back, uh, two teeth. So not a big deal. She's got a big gaping mouth, lots of teeth. So whatever, um, just scared the shit out of me when the phone rang and it was the vet. And uh, they're like, hello, is this Stuart? I'm like, yes. Hi, it's Staples Animal Clinic, clinic calling. And I'm like, oh, my, I just, oh, the worst things run through my head. And I'm not a huge fan of vets overall. I mean, <laughs> sorry guys, but you're kind of assholes. Um, yeah, we're sorry, your dog has this condition and it's gonna die. Unless, of course, you give us $2,000. Oh, you don't have it? Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to have to let your dog die. Or Please pay us $500 so we can kill it for you so it's not in pain. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Are you kidding me? You wouldn't do that with my child. No, you'd do everything you could to make, to make them healthy. I know there is such thing as animal and medical insurance for vets. I get that. But... Are you kidding me? And they don't take payment plans. You know, I can pay, you know, I'm just off the top of my head, like $2,000 for $2,000 surgery. They get a Sally when she had the uh, lymphatic cancer. You know, I could pay $2,000 over the course of four or five months, but I can't pay it all at once. Can we do a payment plan so that I can have my dog live? Uh, no, we don't do payment plans. How about we play a little game, you and I? It's called hide and go fuck yourself. Seriously, I really have an issue with vets and that whole mentality. You're just getting rich off of people that sometimes can't afford it, but because there's an emotional and special attachment with their pet, especially if they don't have children. So a lot of people don't have children, their pet is their child. And you're preying on them by, you know, saying, <sighs> and even to put them down, even to put a pet down costs like $300, $150 for the cheapest, I think, $300 for if you want the ashes and stuff back, like a lot of pet owners do, or the body back so you can bury it. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I, I just have... Like, I, I like our vet. Our vet's a great guy. The nurses that work there, the technicians, the vet technicians that work there are great guys. My dad used to be a vet technician way, way back in his early, in his, in his youth. He eventually became an EMT, an emergency um, medical technician. He became a, uh, an ambulance, uh, not driver, but an ambulance personnel. Um, so he's, you know, saved a lot of lives, brought a lot of lives into the world by giving, you know, birthing children, or 
not himself personally burying children, but you know what I mean. He's saved people that have been in car accidents, you know, so he got a great respect for my dad. He, and he started out as a vet tech, which is fine. But the vet techs are nice, the doctor's nice, but really, just I have an issue with that whole mentality. And it, maybe it's because I'm Canadian. I know that in the States, you guys have to pay for your hospital visits and things like that, and it can get very expensive. But at least they have payment plans because they know you're a human being and they're not going to put you down. Um, but to get Sally's cancer treated, which could have given her like another couple years of life, would have been like four or five thousand dollars. Got to balance the two out. Is it worth it? No. Well, if it's not worth it, oh, well, because we can't save her life, we got to kill her. So still, give me a hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars, please. Like right off um, anyway I, I'm sorry if I'm ranting but <laughs> I like to rant sometimes uh, and that's so yeah I, I have an issue with vets a little bit I hate dentists too but that's just because I'm afraid of the dentist I got three main fears in life running math and the dentist um, but anyway uh, the dentists are alright. I've got a really good dentist at school. But yeah, again, they give you payment plan options if you can't afford it. Like, seriously. Just because it's an animal, I don't understand the correlation to not having a payment plan just because it's an animal. It's still a life. You still have the ability to save that life or make it extended or, you know, have the animal be in less pain. But because the, the, the person can't afford it, the animal's going to suffer because of that or the person's going to have to pump out money that they don't have. And I know a lot of people out there saying, well, to not have sufficient funds in your bank account is irresponsible pet ownership. Well, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck and can't have savings saved up for that kind of thing. As I said earlier, there is like payment, like... Uh, pet insurance plans that you can get so that if anything does come up, it's kind of like uh, OHIP here, which is the Ontario Health uh, Insurance Program. Everything is covered here as far as medications and doctor's visits and stuff like that goes. There's the odd procedure, which is elective, which isn't covered under that, obviously. And um, also the dispensing fees and stuff for medication also not covered under that but most of our stuff here is free for medical uh, and that's a great you know burden off the mind to know that if you break an arm you're not gonna have to pay an arm and a leg <laughs> to uh, get that fixed or to have the aftercare or whatever I mean some physio and some stuff like that if it's above and beyond what is recommended or whatever they that is out of your own pocket kind of thing to upgrade your hospital room to a private room instead of sharing it with one or two other people that's also out of your pocket right so but anyway I mean there are other countries that have better much better medical care than Canada even uh, and more free because there's, there's more things that are covered but Canada prefer, very happy to live in Canada very honored and blessed for that so but Seriously, vets need to step up their game and realize that not everybody can afford things and payment plans are sometimes an option. So, I mean, the last time that um, Precious was in for her, her last set of shots, they gave us a fixed price at the beginning. When we went back to pick her up, it was like an extra $150 of charges. And I was I didn't have the money, and I, I told them I don't have the money. Um, no, what was it? It was something for infection. It was a dot dot dot? Sorry, dot had her teeth cleaned. Uh, she's a Chihuahua, and like tend to pocket food sometimes. Although her, her teeth are really good, but they cleaned the tartar off, and because they needed a, she should have an antibiotic in case they scraped the gum or something, right? Anyway, teeth cleaning was like $150 more than they quoted us twice before. First the initial consultation, then when we dropped her off, then all of a sudden extra $150 on top of, because that's the charge, and then plus the antibiotics. So I'm like, I don't have that money. This is how much I have. I'll give you, you know, it was more than half. It was like three quarters of what I owed them. 
and uh, that's all I have in my account. And they're standing there still waiting, like, do you have any cash? Do you know, have another account, a credit card, something to put it on? I'm like, no, not at this time. No, I don't. That's what I have. That's what you're getting. So like, oh, well, we'll just hold the antibiotics then. You know, uh, when you can come back and pay the rest, we'll give you we'll those to you. I said, that'll be, in, that'll be in a week. She won't need them in a week. So hopefully she doesn't die from an infection during the course of that week because I literally can't afford the extra money that you f fucked me over on. I had the perfect amount, uh, plus some left over uh, for groceries and stuff. But no, you had to all of a sudden change the price. And even today when we took Precious in, um, we were told last month, month and a half ago, when she got her last shots that it would be 200 bucks to get her fixed. It's fine. We have all that. We have more than enough money this month. That's fine. But we go in there and she's like going through the cost, you know, $14 for that, to take that tooth out and, you know, whatever, and 220 for the spay. And we're like, whoa, whoa. we were told 200. She stroked it out and put 200. She goes, okay, yeah, because they just changed the prices last week. So she said, if they didn't, if you guys didn't say anything to just give you the give it to you for 220 but since you said something uh just you're gonna get the 200 price and i'm like you're fucking right we are like seriously so i have issues with vets and things i mean even though our vet is super nice and you know the doctors that work there are awesome and the vet techs are nice i hate the girls at the front desk because they're always ones that fuck me over they're the faces i see when that happens so i mean it's not really fair i guess but it's the way it is Anyway, I am at Blappy's now, so I am going to shut up about the vet, and hopefully Precious will be fine. i got to pick her up tonight between 4.30 and 5, and, uh, whatever, i got to find parking. Uh, between 4.30 and 5, and hopefully she'll be fine. And she'll be in pain for a little bit. She'll have to wear the cone of shame, so she doesn't chew her stitches or anything, but that's okay. Um... But yeah, then we don't have to worry about her getting pregnant or getting all these other tumors and stuff that are associated with having a uterus and all that jazz. So anyway, I'm at Dave's now. I'm going to head in and see what they're doing. Like I said, I didn't bring anything to work on. I didn't do my X-Wing or anything. But Michael's working on his Gojira class. And uh, who knows what Dave's working on. Dave's always got projects on the go. He said he's got two one-day builds he wants to do for something tomorrow. So I don't know what he's working on. He's also got my comm badges he needs to do. Um, because some people have ordered comm badges. And uh, so they'll be ready at the end of the week kind of thing. But let's go. So yeah, let's go in and see what is going on with those two fine gentlemen. All right. See you in a minute. See, I told you he was working on comm badges. Here they are. Ha. Hey, Michael. Hi, Stuart. Working on the Gojira? Yep. What are you doing? I am claying the mold, essentially. That's what the mold's gonna be. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fill that with, uh, with rubber, let it cure for 24 hours, flip it over, take the clay out, Reuse this wall, put it back on the other side, and then fill that side with rubber, and we'll have a mold. And that's how it's done, folks. That's how she's done. So you're quite far on this thing. Yeah. Uh, made a lot of progress yesterday and today. This part's critical because everything attaches to the secondary hull, as you know. Mm -hmm. The struts, the primary hull. So I need that for everything to line up. It's going to head over and take a look at your strut here. For your miscellany. Is this the magnet? Yeah, this is the magnetized one. Yep. You can tell by the weight, right? Yeah. So, mind if I show your secrets? No, no, go ahead. So this, so it, so it can come apart so we can get access to the lighting and stuff in here. He's put some magnets in and metal. And then it just it does put together. There we go. And it's held with magnets. I don't think it's lined up properly though. It does take two hands. Yes, and I'm holding a finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So it's good to start at the back. Yeah. And then it should just click right into place. Like that. Beauty. Yep. That's cool. I'm getting excited. So hopefully we're done by Wonderfest. Fingers crossed. This looks like a bird. Like where in here somewhere? Yeah, like see here, hold my phone for a second. <laughs> I want to show everybody what I'm talking about. See, here's the beak. Here's the eye. Here's the little feather. Oh, yeah. It's like a beak. I see it. But it's going to have like a clear dome over it, obviously. Yeah, if you so. want. The, um, the Sark Collector's right here. That's getting ready to be prepped as well. There's just a gap that's in there that I have to fill before it gets molded. Mm hmm yeah, very cool. Yeah, this is all gonna get straightened and filled and cool. Well, there you go, guys. Updates on the Gojira. And there's Dave. Say hi, Blappy. Hi, Blappy. Who's Blappy? Who's Blappy? <laughs> yeah, where's Blappy? Anyway, yeah, just showing some Gojira progress for the uh, captain's log this week. <laughs> You're recording for the captain's log. Yes, I am. So make up for it now. I'm sorry. I'll give you a spanking later. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Painting the white. Very nice. Yeah, don't take any pictures of that or videos, please. I'm serious. I'm dead fucking serious. So just leaving Dave's. I was only there for about two hours. I uh, went out for lunch with Dave and Michael and just kind of chatted. Michael's uh, progress on the Gojira is coming along really good. I'm looking forward to seeing that thing finished. Hopefully, it'll be done by June for Wonderfest. That'd be really ideal. I think that's what he plans on doing, and he's going to have it lit, and it's going to be awesome and all that jazz, so looking forward to that. Um, Dave's got something going on that he can't show us or talk about, which is fine. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm just heading back home. Um, <clears throat> got to go pick Precious up in like two hours. Kind of worried about her, so yeah, no, it's just kind of I don't know, just kind of an off day, not a bad day, just an off day. It's not really feeling super excited about anything. I could have stayed, but stayed at Dave's a bit longer, but I just I don't know. Again, just could be I'm upset about my uh, uncle passing away and stuff too and just worried about precious so but anyway don't want to drag you guys down or anything I want to keep this upbeat and all that jazz so uh, <clears throat> I don't know if there's anything else going on this week that's really super exciting as far as the captain's log will go uh, might be a shorter one. I hope it's a, I hope it's a shorter one than last last week. Last week was an hour and 17 minutes, which is a little long. But some of you watched it, and I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you to you guys. Also had a really negative commenter, which I might might as well talk about. He messaged me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, his name was Phil. Phil something, I can't remember anymore, Phil Leland or something, and uh, started talking to me about how, I have all the conversations saved too, how he went, started saying I don't like Discovery now because, you know, they're pushing the gay agenda and everything's got to be, everything's gay and all this female uh, crew all the time, I don't know, it's bullshit, right? So I give him short answers like, yeah, well, if you know, if that's something you think, that's... You know, whatever. 
I wasn't agreeing with him, I wasn't arguing with him, and he kept getting snarky with me saying, I think you're just giving short answers because you're pushing an agenda or whatever. So I just fucking blocked him because he's an idiot. And uh, as soon as I blocked him on Facebook, uh, he commented on my last captain's log and the video that was released the day afterwards on the Herojin ship. He was uh, posting the same message. You know, Stuart Foley is uh, an asshole, an idiot, whatever the fuck he said. I didn't really even read it. Uh, it was just harassment. Uh, he even said he, would want, he wants to rip my heart out and eat it in front of me because I'm a worthless patoff which could be considered a death threat and I really should go to the police with that. I think I will because I've saved some screen caps of it. I reported them all to YouTube, all of the comments, and uh, as harassment and whatnot. So hopefully they will... Uh, I also banned him from the channel, which means he can't comment. So blocked him on Facebook, banned him from the channel. But this Phil Redding, I think was his name. But no, he started out the conversation on Facebook Messenger just being all friendly talking about whatever, said check out some of my YouTube videos, <clears throat> which I didn't really check out because I didn't have the time. He goes, I also have another account, and he sent me that one, it's, it's called Jim Kirk. So, and then he started going off on this whole anti-gay thing, pushing their agenda, bullshit. And I'm like, I don't fucking care, just whatever. And uh, I just got sick of the messages coming in about it, so I blocked him. I blocked both his accounts, the Phil Redding and the Jim Kirk one. And, uh, yeah, as soon as that happens, he starts going on YouTube. And So you guys ever see any comments like that that are just totally negative for the sake of being negative? Uh, basically just insulting me or Samuel or anybody. Feel free to report them or flag them, whatever, to YouTube. Because that all helps with their algorithm to get these assholes, either get their channels taken down or uh, just get their comments flagged for inappropriateness or whatever. Because people like that don't deserve to have a they don't deserve to have a voice and I know everybody should have a right to say their opinion but when it's an opinion that's valid yeah that good or good or bad sure you got a valid opinion you are entitled to that right but to just be a dick for dick's sake because I blocked you on Facebook because of your agenda and accusing me of oh yeah that was one of the things he put in on the YouTube comment was that as Trek Yards we're pushing the discovery agenda on this I don't fucking know what the hell he was talking about, but whatever, just an idiot. And he commented the same thing like seven times on one video, three times on the other one, and then he, everybody that commented, he'd make little jabs at them in their comments, saying that you're stupid for liking Trek Yards. So just a complete asshole. So something else that bothered me, and that really, that really kicked my depression that day. I was really in a, in a down place that day because of that and then I had to physically mentally I mean sorry mentally pull myself out of it by just saying this guy's opinion doesn't mean anything there's so many other people that have positive and it just took me a while but eventually pulled me out of it so if this dickhead's watching this video which he might be because unfortunately on YouTube you can't people you can't block people from watching your content all you can do is block them from commenting so if you're watching yeah you affected me you made me a little depressed for for about half a day and fuck you for that fuck you very much but you know what I'm stronger than that I beat it and uh, go fuck yourself essentially I don't usually get like that but with people that are just ignorant assholes like he is no no problems no problems pulling up the, the fuck yous and the, get the fuck out of my life so Anyway, sorry you guys had to hear that and see that, but I, I just wanted to let you guys know, make aware of it that sometimes when I'm in a down mood, it's because of assholes like that. And uh, if you ever see those kind of comments on our videos or even in our thre uh, threads on YouTube, uh, sorry, on Facebook, in the Trek Yards group, if you ever see any of that negativity, just report, report it, please. Feel like you need to report it. If it's just hate for hate's sake and just no constructiveness out of it, which is what these guys' comments totally were. Um, yeah, because I've said it before, I said it not that long ago in the Facebook group. You can have a differing opinion. We welcome that. We love to have the positive and negative for things like discovery, but you need to know how to present your, your information and your opinion. You can't just offer a problem with, or state a problem without offering a solution. 
needs to be constructive criticism. A lot of people said, why have any negativity at all on the page? Because negativity is important in a conversation, conversational setting. You need to have a good and bad. It creates, generates conversation, makes people think, gets thoughts flowing, and everybody has that right. But when it comes to just hate for hate's sake, spewing, I hate discovery, I hate discovery, and if you like discovery, you're an asshole, and blah, 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 whatever. Go fuck yourself. Seriously. Might not like things that you like, but I'm not going to go and you know, bash you on social media about it. That's just retarded. People just have no intelligence, no... <clears throat> they're behind their keyboards, they're just being dicks. Because it's anonymous, and uh, yeah. Anyway, there's another rant. I tend to rant when I drive, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, as I was saying, I'm not sure what else will be in this captain's log, but uh, you guys have expressed, many of you have expressed an interest in these kind of logs because you get to see the kind of the daily thing. Uh, I don't want to do every log like this. Like I said, some are going to be very focused. I've done those before on like, you know, the Secret of Vulcan Fury game that never happened was a really good one. Where's the engine room? You know, the political landscape of Discovery way back when Discovery was first announced. Things like that. You guys really eat those up too. Actually, those get more, a lot more views. Because people care more about that than just listening to me ramble. But it's the uh, true Trek Yards fans and fans of me that uh, enjoy watching this kind of thing. So I'm, I like to make content for everybody. And please check out my other channel. Um, there's a link in the description below. There's another YouTube channel that's just the Captain Foley one, where it's more personal stuff, not uh, not all Trek Yards related. And uh, check that out. There's, there'll be a little subscription thing at the end of the video of uh, me holding a phaser. That's the link. You click for that if you want to subscribe to that. Um, so yeah, please check that out as well. And I'll start adding more content to that. Eventually I want to filter these kind of videos over there. But right now, I kind of want to utilize the large audience of Trek Yards. So if you guys are watching and are interested in more like personal videos and stuff, head on over to my second channel and just subscribe to that. I don't release a lot of stuff right there right now, but like I said, I do plan to in the future. And uh, it's more personal home stuff, you know. It's, uh, stuff that doesn't interest, interest the everyday Trek Yards fan kind of thing, or Star Trek fan. Which is fine, because I understand a lot of these, you know, I wouldn't want to watch a lot of these videos too with the length they are. But at the same time, there are YouTubers that I do like watching this kind of content from as well. So, and I thank you guys to anyone that does watch seems to care about my life. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So let me know in the comments below what you think about that and whether you are subscribed to my other channel, whether you're going to, and what content you think I should put up there. So anyway, guys, I am going to cut it off for now and I will talk to you all soon and see where this captain's log takes us. All right. So here's Precious the day after. She's got a cone that says under construction and things like I'll be back, be nice, spoil me, hug me, and kiss me. It's a poor puppy. She's feeling pretty good. We didn't have the cone on her most of last night because she's a good girl. And we were on the couch with her. She didn't didn't try to lick it or anything, so I will see how long the cone has to be on. But since I have filming and stuff to do today, I'm not confident leaving her up here by herself. Well, this one's not much help to watch her. To not pick at it and chew on it, right? And in keeping with my vets are assholes, they did charge me the 220 instead of the 200 and they did charge me $20 for the teeth instead of 14 Anyway, we took care of that. We actually, I actually paid the full amount because I just wanted to get her back. I didn't have an itemized list, so they emailed that later. And Sylvia got it and realized that they basically screwed us for the prices that they upped them to, not the prices we agreed on beforehand. Again, 
But we have now have a credit there for next time and we have to get anything done. So it's just frustrating. Um, vets, I just hate vets. But anyway, that's it. Now it is Wednesday. I'm heading downstairs. I got to um, hop on a Skype call with one of our uh, Trek Yards Originals guys that wants one of his ships done and Samuel and take some notes for that. Then we need to get some questions worked out for um, something we're doing on Thursday with Vic. Vic McNanya, I can't even say his name. You know who he is, Star Trek Continues guy. We're talking to him on Thursday. And uh, <clears throat> we're gonna have him on the show talking about his overall story arc for Star Trek Continues. And things like that. So, but anyway, just wanted to give you guys a heads up. That's what was going on. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. I also got my William Shatner print finally framed. And I got the Trek Yards logo there. So it's this big empty space up in this corner. I think that works fairly well. I like it. It's going to be going on the wall at some point. Um, but yeah, I actually have to make a coffee before I do anything else. So let's go upstairs and make a coffee. So set this to the largest one. My trusty old Star Trek mug. And brew. Exciting, I know, right? Prize on your cup. This is a cup I got from Think Geek that I absolutely love. It's got the delta on the one side, and then of course when it heats up, it's got the uh, TOS Enterprise on this side. And it does say um, USS Enterprise NTC 1701 there, as you can see. But I gotta get some milk and sugar into it now. Actually, I'm gonna put it in French vanilla today. There you go, now the Enterprise is fully realized. Almost, there's a little tips there that... And the puppy is sad, I hear her whining. Why are you sad, puppy? You're so cute. I'll take that off soon, don't worry. Just gotta do some things first. Don't cry. Anyway, coffee. And I am expecting a few things from UPS and Pure later, so I'm gonna just keep my door open because it's not that cold out today. Looky, looky, the mail's here.
find if the door is here, they're more likely to knock and not just leave a slip. Well guys, coffee's gone. It's three hours later. We just film, finished filming a bunch of stuff. This might be a hint here. We filmed the Fleet Yards mission briefing on this old girl. This is my model that I built like 20 plus years ago. It's got a few flaws, obviously, because that's when I was learning how to build models and it's been through quite a few moves and things, but uh, there you have it. It's missing some landing gear. Some have broken off. And the front's gone <laughs> but yeah so this was used in the mission briefing episode to kind of show some detail and have me do some flybys and so hopefully you guys like this and uh yeah anyway i gotta go do a few things now um and uh, get some stuff done in real life because this has been three hours of just filming stuff and Anyway, I'm done with it. I'm done with filming for today. I don't want to write either. I got a script to write, but we can do that later. <sighs> so as for right now, I'm just going to call it quits. I'm going to put my falcon back where it belongs. Look at how big it is. It's huge. It's huge. Um, and uh, see you guys in a bit. Bye. I'm also wearing my falcon shirt. <laughs> for research and you know, I'll look down and get the number and oh look at that it's a docking port sweet so I just put the Falcon back in her home it's her home base right there sitting in the corner I gotta find a better spot to display it but anyway so yeah off to do other things oh poor puppy Poor puppy. Don't make fun of her, Dot. It's not nice. Hey, cutie. Well, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for today's uh, Captain's Log. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, not much really going on with it. I didn't know what else to put in it. Um, and it is late on Wednesday with the puppy running around like crazy. Um, so I need to get this edited and stuff. Tomorrow we're very busy. Got a few things we need to film and uh, a special guest star joining us. So we, I need to focus on that as well. And... Uh, get that done so i'm gonna call this a wrap for today thank you for watching the captain's log and who knows what next week holds we'll see see you soon guys oh subscribe obviously and check out other videos and i'll see you guys in the future